Hello, everyone, and welcome to Quests and Chaos. This is a special Tuesday night with some amazing people that I am joined with. Uh, we have Laura, we have uh, Bunny Julie, we have Tiana, and we have Brian Mosley from Safe Haven Games, the uh, creator, dis publisher. Well, what would you say you are for? Freelance. Um, I'm a designer. Uh, I am a. I am the <laughs> publisher, but I'm a designer. Uh, our other uh, lead designer is Jake Hampton. So I, I can't awesome. take. I can't take any more than half credit that, <laughs> for this game. Awesome. Credit, credit or so, blame, depending. <laughs> Fair enough. Your vote of confidence is overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> You 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 can you can take the, the kudos. He can take the blame. There you go. <laughs> no, it's going to be the other way around. I promise. <laughs> so we've got uh, the demo uh, scenario that we are running through um, today. You can, in fact, uh, they can download this uh, uh, once they're back on the Kickstarter, right? Absolutely. Uh, actually, even before you back, you can check it out. Uh, this this demo is. Uh, there's just a link that'll take you straight to all the resources for this demo. Nice. Cool. Um, in the chat, there's a link in the chat uh, to take you to the Kickstarter where you can uh, help them unlock some stretch goals and you get to figure out what kind of animal people are going to be released next. Because yeah, the, Otter, the Otterfolk uh, just won the latest poll, so we'll see who wins the next one. Yeah, and we've added uh, cat folk and shark folk recently too. So, all right. So, and the link works. Thank you. Pat. All right. Um, I, I feel I feel called out. That's <laughs> so. Uh, one of the things we do here on Quest and Chaos is we have bits that help us pay for things. So when you donate uh, bits on Twitch, five hundred bits gets an inspiration token to the group. Um, and this is a new system. And Seth started us off right with 500 bits to the players so we can figure out how they're going to work. And here's how they are going to work. Uh, for So this is a, a dice pool system, kind of. Is that what it's called? Yeah. So you have a, uh, you have a stat or like a skill and an ability tied to that skill. You add the two together, you roll that many D10s. Uh, and if you get over a seven or higher, that is a success. And you need a certain number of successes to do things. Um, and the more successes you have also influences the amount of damage you do on attacks. And so with one inspiration, we're going to be able to add a die to that dice pool. Now, I think we have to do it before we roll. Uh, yes, just I would agree. Just to kind of, you know, give a little bit more. But two of them will give us advantage. And remember when I said you needed seven or higher? With advantage, you only need six or higher. Hey, uh, disadvantage, you can also guess, goes the other way. Eight or higher when you have disadvantage. So that's how it's going to work. Nine or higher when you have double disadvantage. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. Don't yeah, have please. to use them all at once. <laughs> right. uh, and then, uh, Don't Duke spend Lee. it all in one place. <laughs> yes. So that is that is one inspiration token from NGC457. Thank you so much. And then Duke Lee coming through 500 bits to the GM. Ooh. We'll have to figure out well, how to thank you. <laughs> ah, then the, the Hefner, uh, always a favorite, coming in with one in one, 1,000 bits from our number one mod, our first, you know what? He wasn't our first mod, but uh, but we like him better than our first mod. So hey, that's uh, that's uh, that's a thing. Thoughts fired. No, no, we're we're not we're not we're not really afraid of Hef. I'll just let's just move on. Let's just uh, let's, <laughs> let's just let's just dust that off and move forward. <laughs> skip that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, I just got uh, the players, because uh, I'm one of them tonight, uh, another 500 bits from the Hefner nice. for that. <laughs> Oof. All right. So I think uh, I think that's that's it for the announcements. Uh, be sure to check out the Kickstarter. Um, back it. Um, 
it needs, you know, it needs, it needs to get to 30,000. So let's like, it's got eight days to go. Let's come on. Let's get I it. I love over that. There. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely. Um, I've seen, you know, what I've seen so far, I really enjoy. So I think that we're going to be doing more of this uh, once we actually have the game come out. You can, yeah. And it's funded yeah. already. So that's definitely happening. Yes. Oh, and there's, you know, the stretch goals, there's miniatures, there's uh, monsters. The artwork is fantastic. <laughs> Big miniatures, yes. <laughs> All right. Now I will stop talking and I will turn it over to Brian to lead us through Freelancer Skies over to Lindy. So, sorry, I just totally lost <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um all right. Well, uh, I'm going to just introduce you guys to uh, the, in, uh, the to the briefing, uh, and I'll just jump right in. So this uh, is about two weeks after you've finished your training. You've uh, all been officially accepted as freelancers, and you're uh, starting to get antsy for your first real mission. You've done some training stuff, but uh, nothing official. So you're all a little bit on edge waiting for that knock on the door to hear your team number over the speakers. Uh, and uh, yeah, until then, you're just going to have to content yourself training uh, and some of the easy work on your airship. Um, but yeah, you're just kind of overall, you're just waiting for something to happen. Uh, when it does, it's definitely not what you were expecting. In the middle of your lunch, you all get a summons from the, the marshal himself. Uh, you've never heard of a rookie team being called to see the the marshal before. Uh, so when you report to his office, Marshal Bertold Adig waves you in. Uh, you've all seen the marshal before, but now that you're seeing him up close, the pressure that he emits is enormous. His muscles are dense and thick. His eyes seem to drill through you. You find yourself standing straighter than you thought possible, and your minds are racing to remember if your uniform is done up properly. His office is a perfect image of tidiness and not a single thing seems out of place. Um, except for a clipboard on his desk with a few papers stuck into it. Above his chair, uh, which is only made of simple wood, you see a runic spear held on display, the spear glowing slightly. And when he sees you and that your whole team is there, uh, he finally breaks the silence. <clears throat> All right. He says, good day, team. I've just received a telegraph from the Soria family heir, Don Marco de Soria. He's reported a missing civilian airship, the Icicle, that departed from the city of Terrerco Perdeas two days ago and has decided that the local garrison soldiers need help from the freelancers. Apparently, the local, the local captain, Dominic Cipriano, has had some brigand troubles in recent months. He's believed the brigands were too small time to handle an operation like capturing an airship. It appears a good captain was wrong. The Icicle is a civil class airship passenger liner that was also secretly carrying the Southern Reach's latest taxes. The loss of this tax revenue is a massive blow to Parliament, and getting it back is important. However, two of the passengers were one of the younger daughters of the De La Vega family and her newlywed husband. The De La Vega family is the largest producer of food in the country, and Parliament wants to keep them happy. They're considering the safety of the passengers a higher priority than finding the tax money. But just between us, I recommend you make sure that money is secured as well. We're talking about a lot of money, and if it gets into the wrong hands, well, just see that it doesn't. Your mission has three objectives in order of importance. Rescue the passengers and crew. Ensure their safety. That's 98 people, all told. 76 are passengers and 22 are crew. Locate and recover the tax money and arrest the perpetrators. Don Marcos de Soria is your contract issuer. He will be available in the local Soria estate in town to assist in any way he can. He may not have any official power yet, but he is the heir to the most powerful noble house in the country, besides the royals. So he can probably help in some way. If you need additional leads, the Freelancer Chapter House is headed by Commander Halima, a dragonkin who's been in charge of the house for over 50 years. Don Marco and Commander Halima should be able to give you more information. You have permission to use lethal force on this mission, if you deem it necessary. 
but the civilian's safety always comes first. Be advised that Ter Tercero Perdias is a city that has a lot of tension between the aristocracy and the commoners. So try to keep the violence from entering the streets. Don't get trigger happy and harm innocents. The last thing Talindia needs is more tension. And the last thing you need is to be court-martialed. I hope we're clear on that. Prep your ship for immediate launch. You'll have 500 escudos of discretionary funding for this mission or for convincing the locals to cooperate with your investigation. Oh, and one more thing. I usually wouldn't send rookies on missions like this. It's too important, but Alonso put in a good word for you. After all, you've completed your training and the veterans are already off on other contracts. So make the freelancers proud out there. Do you have any questions for me? What uh, what the city what city are we going to? I forgot. Uh... <laughs> the the city is Ter, uh, Tercio Perdias. Ah uh, yes, you you mentioned that. <laughs> um, Olivia, a, a bit of an aside for Olivia. Uh, oh, Olivia's not playing. There's no Olivia. <laughs> Well, Sorry. that was my question, is are these other characters that we're not playing still part of our team? Uh, they they are, but they're not uh, here. They're going to be actually on the airship uh, and remain doing other tasks. There are always other uh, members of your crew that, are, that have other jobs on the airship or either keeping guard or uh, being sent on other side quests but having heard that the contractor for this job is de soria we would have probably made the connection that our crew member is probably related right correct he mm -hmm. is actually olivia's brother uh -huh. so they are very well acquainted <laughs> um yeah so if you guys have any questions for the marshal uh yeah. now is the time katarina sir um I wanted to know about how we are going to move all those 98 people. Well, that's uh, honestly up to you guys. Um, however, just uh, be aware that you will have uh, access to the freelancer chapter house as well as uh, the garrison and they will be able to supply you with any you know heavy lifting uh, transport that you need. Uh, what's really troubling is right now we have yet to find them. So finding them is going to be uh, your job. Moving them will kind of be the garrison or the chapter houses. Da, thank you, sir. Okay, uh, we're going to go and get in the ship. <laughs> yes. So... Uh, before you guys leave, he does uh, hand you guys. I'm um, uh, looking for a um, a handout to give you guys. Uh, he is giving you guys the the actual telegram. So this has your actual orders. Uh, you guys can add it to your notes um, and just keep that in mind if you ever need to know how many passengers you're looking for, uh, as well as um, just what your objectives are. Should be hard to forget, but you know. <laughs> You'd be amazed. <laughs> All right. Well, he says, uh, Marshal Adlig, Adlig says, uh, the rest of your questions will have to wait. And I bet you can find better answers once you get to Terrico Perdias, anyways. Report to your ship and prep for takeoff. Report to Commander Halima at the local chapter house and fair warning. She's a stickler for regulations. Once you get your supplies loaded, depart at once. Divine bless you all. With that, he returns to his desk and the papers in front of him. It's a bad idea to not leave the room after the marshal has ordered you to depart. So you leave his office and head out to the top deck of the Resolute, the airship mobile base, you and the rest of the first division call home. Uh, your team has been given a Drake class airship and it looks like it's been see uh, seen a lot of active duty. That being said, the engine is solid and a brand new rune core was just installed last week. The support division mechanics are finishing up their check and loading on your uh, provisions and ammunition when you arrive. A support division staffer comes uh, up with a brown paper package, your mission funding. He takes a look at you all and uh, as he's about to hand it over 
and he says, uh, you be careful with uh, that that is accounted for. Uh, the last team that tried to skim off of the top didn't fare too well with Berthold. I'm sorry, the nose twitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, of course not. Of course we would We would not skim. Deeply appreciated, sir. He just kind of shrugs and hands you guys the money. Uh, you can use this money for any kind of bribes or to purchase any specialty tools that you guys need. Uh, but any unspent money or purchased items that are still in your possession have to be returned at the end of the contract. That's how the mission funding works. Uh, the mechanic runs you all through the checklist and in spite of some scratches and needing a new coat of paint, your airship's good to go. However, the nameplate has been shorn off completely, leaving your ship without a proper name. Uh, you guys have the opportunity to either name your ship uh, or just work it out amongst yourselves. Uh, you know, Ravamana, she doesn't really care much about names. Um, she instead, as a ship's engineer her, herself, uh, she's going to give a once over, you know, just make sure the mechanic didn't miss anything. So she's going to actually leave uh, and just uh, go through that checklist herself. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Make absolutely. sure. Well, <laughs> and yeah, she doesn't care much about you. She says, "Name it whatever you want." I'm uh, you know what? Yeah, she work. she should definitely uh, make an engineering check then. The first roll of the game. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Get it. Okay. <laughs> this will be really sad if she does poorly. <laughs> Her first mission. <laughs> okay. All yeah. right. Okay. I, see, successes. I see three crits. So. Oh yes, and I get a reroll. <laughs> right. So let me no, reroll three I, I, more. Oh, I think I think it's uh, I think it's already added in there. It's already in in there. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So and actually, uh, it, it looks to me like you actually have more successes than it's saying. It looks yeah, like you're saying it has to be greater than seven. It's equal to or greater than seven. So uh, you I, actually I have. Wait. I don't have equal to, so maybe I should say greater than six. Yeah, uh, because yeah, you you should have uh, ah, one, you should have two, six successes. I see. Four, five, six. Yep. Yes. So yeah. Anyways, that was a very successful check. Uh, you actually did notice a minor issue with the uh, the alignment of uh, the rune core, but uh, you're able to just kind of quietly put it back together properly and uh, maybe give a little scolding to the engineer who just walked away having okayed the ship. Yeah. Uh, she she, she kind of grumbles herself while she's doing that, but and she makes sure to let the, that uh, mechanic know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you, you fixed that issue entirely. Um, just, just loom and make over sure, that engineer. <laughs> I'll take this opportunity to remind you, make sure to mar uh, tally down on your character sheet uh, the number of attempts you make yep. uh, any time you perform a check, whether it was successful or not, you tally that because that is how you uh, actually increase your skills is by uh, attempting checks, whether yep. they succeed or fail. Oh. So, all right. Um, uh, anyone have any input in the name? Uh, if not, uh, I was going to call it Dos Vidania. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys want to do? The feisty otter is the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> mostly Which because none of us is he an otter? Mostly because none of us are, and it'll confuse people. <laughs> you otter know. Hmm. <laughs> And half of our session is just coming up with the name right. of the ship. Always. <laughs> right. Always. I remember how long it took us to come up with the, with the Foxy Irregulars. That was that was quite the argument. Now, I will say, uh, the mechanics see you guys de deliberating, and he does say the ship was formerly known as the Thorn. If you wish to keep that name, that is an option. Um, We're and... the Thornier. This is the Thornier. <laughs> More, oh, right. Or Thornier. Yeah. Thornier. Thornier. I like good. it. Thornier. Well, this is good. 
So awesome. While you load up your personal effects and prepare to depart on the thornier, uh, for now it's a simple matter of just tossing your trunk into the bunk and getting to your stations for takeoff. Ravamana, uh, you remove the restraints from the rune core and the ship immediately begins to fly on its own. Uh, the mechanics on the uh, on the on deck remove the docking clamps, and Simeon uh, starts up the ignition. Your propellers sputtering to life as you take off, taking an easy tilt away from the Resolute and turning towards uh, Tereco Paradias. Uh, you're all finally off on your first mission. Who's oh, piloting? I... <laughs> Who's piloting our craft? Uh, oh, Simeon. Yeah. Simeon, ah. Yes. It's at this point, uh, Simeon, you're going to rem you remember that you have a small bottle of whiskey hidden in your locker. Um, hmm. No, I probably it, shouldn't drink on the job. Fair enough. <laughs> save it, save it, save it for when we're successful. <laughs> yeah, so responsible of you. But doesn't right. the ship fly on its own? <laughs> yeah. It'll fly on its own, sure, but it won't pilot on its own. So, uh, everyone, your uh, Simeon is currently your pilot. Just the roles on the ship. Um, Simeon is your pilot. Uh, your engineer is Ravamana. Katarina is your rigger. So she'll be uh, jumping around on the sides and uh, getting things fixed out. And then your gunners uh, are well. Your gunner is Lorenzo. <laughs> speaking of speaking of which maybe this would be a great opportunity to just describe our characters a little bit and uh, yeah that's a good call uh, why don't you guys describe your own characters uh, i'll go first because i think that i'm the most boring uh lorenzo lorenzo is uh he's he's a human commoner uh he's the every man uh and uh, of the group he's he's hardy folk down down uh down home hardy folk and uh shoots things. That's what he does. And he talks like a Mario. <laughs> <laughs> he wants a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, right. Rob, oh, go, no, yeah, go ahead. Okay, no, I'm going to say it's uh, uh, Katarina. Um, she, as you might have seen, uh, is of the rabbit folk. The, uh, the, uh, how do you say it? Zata. Zayat? Zayat. 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 Um, they weren't uh, treated the best, and uh, my people were subjected to horrible atrocities, but I've decided to pledge my life to help others and ensure nobody should suffer as, as my compatriots did, and I am the rigor on the ship. And I'm going to uh, try to do the Russian accent, but we see. <laughs> <laughs> Russian the Jensen's disease accent. is everywhere. Russian, Russian accent's not too bad, but it, it gets a little... Uh, anyway. It's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ravamana is a big, hulking uh, dragonkin. Uh, she joined Freelancer because she just wanted to kind of get out on her own, um, be far from the city she grew up in, you know, really test her own uh, medal in battle. Um, as you can imagine, being Dragonkin, she is quite powerful, quite intimidating, but also quite, you know, sharp. Um, and she is not only the ship's engineer, but she'll be the team's medic as well. So uh, <laughs> keep that in mind. We'll see what uh, what method she uses. <laughs> airships and airships and people, they work basically the same. Yeah. <laughs> And rounding up the rest of the group, I am Simeon Freelancer at Tel Sag Sagrada. Sagrada? Sagrada. Sagrada. Um, a, a mutt. Um, I, lo I lost what the actual word is. There it is. Skylos mutt. Uh, so, mm -hmm. yes, dog dog person uh, who is a, a dashing rogue, uh, very much in trouble because of the things that I say, as able to talk my way out of the problems that I get myself into. Um, and he joined the, the the freelancers because it's it's become it's become a family to him. I mean, he's taken on the name freelancer because he doesn't have his own family. He was an urchin, and so he uh, he found a place to belong, and it's a good place to be. All right. Uh, well, 
I'm going to move you guys to the map of Tercero Perdias. Um, and just after, just under the three hour mark, uh, the city appears on the horizon. Uh, you knew it was a major railway hub, but from the distance, the number of railroads running into the city seems almost comical. You count 44 different tracks going into the walled city, each one passing through a gate that is thoroughly modern, clashing against the old walls that are centuries old. Three stone spires rise from the center of the town, an ancient hollowed site that the city was built around. The city is a clash of different colors, and it seems like every house was painted to try and outshine its neighbor, resulting in a collage of bright walls and rooftops. The Saria family estate is visible from the air with its gardens and property, almost an entire district of the city in size. Olivia, oh, uh, is looking at the map. <laughs> She's there. Um, Katerina, you're using the signal mirror to contact garrison forces. And after a, a moment, uh, an actual flashing signal comes back from the garrison. You've been cleared for landing at the Freelancer Chapter House. Um, all right. Um, you guys are all going to have a little bit of chant uh, to just kind of familiarize yourselves with the city using the map. So uh, you should all be seeing the map in roll 20 now. Yeah. All right. And you can kind of see what I mean by the patchwork of <laughs> the patchwork of colors and stuff, and then the size of the Surya state uh, way over here. Ah. Uh, you see Garrison HQ's over here, and that the uh, the chapter house is down kind of right where the um, all the oh my gosh, I'm, uh, sections co connect. And what is the, what's the chapter house? Is that a freelancer or is the garrison the freelancer uh, org? Uh, the sorry, I'm just you know what I'm realizing that uh, <laughs> I'm One just now realizing yeah. I'm realizing that not everyone can see the actual uh, object uh, the locations. So let me reveal those. There we go. Whoops. Where did that go? <laughs> Always fun. Sorry. What is, what is Both is great like that. Yeah. Oh, oh. now I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Ah. Damien, where are you landing the ship? <laughs> Fly I'm around the front on. On and we love. I, I got the mirror here. <laughs> There's a no radio? <laughs> what, you think we're rich? <laughs> oh man, all right. So, uh, for some reason, my bad, sorry. So uh, I accidentally deleted one of the locations, <laughs> <laughs> but that's just the way it is sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I will. Cool. So right here is the uh, garrison headquarters. Ah, okay. Okay. So trust me. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, you, you arrive over the chapter house and are waved down to the docks. Um, they are unusually uh, locked. They're larger than usual for a city this size, and that's a sign of how often freelancer aid is requ requested in this city. Um, there appears to be a team from the third division already here on a, mi on a separate mission. Um, so it looks like... Uh, looks like Lorenzo and Katarina uh, should make a detect check um, as the gunners and riggers. 
All right. And this is going to be a group check. So you will uh, pool your total number of successes. But did, did we figure out what, what the target number needed to be? Uh, you, yeah, you don't it, know that it, in advance? No, 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 but, not that no. target number. Yeah, role, I think you can number. put in seven. I think uh, I had just greater or less than. Yeah, I had accidentally said it as less than versus greater than, but it ah. should be um, equal to, yeah, like it automatically got says it, equal got to. It. Let's, let's try it. Let's try it. All right. What did I? Uh, three successes. Two. So uh, that is. Uh, uh, all right. Five. Uh, well, you guys uh, spot a dragonkin in a pristine uniform waiting on the dock. Her insignia designates that she is a commander and that she must be Commander Halima, who you were warned about uh, by the marshal. Uh, uh, you all take a moment to kind of prepare yourselves for her inspection as you come in for a landing nice and slowly. Thank you, Simeon. Oh, uh, wait, is, Loret is Simeon the pilot? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I thought so. Okay. Got it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the docking ramp slams down sharply and Commander Halima steps on board and looks around. She's very old, even for a dragonkin, and her scales are beginning to turn gray. You are all prepared for her, and she lets out a soft snort. Seems like she's a little bit disappointed to not have something to complain about. <laughs> we can give you stuff to complain about. <laughs> Says, I suppose I'd better welcome you all to Tercero Perdias. I hope your flight was pleasant. I'm Commander Halima, and this is my chapter house. Now, let's get you briefed on what we found so far. Your contract giver is Don Marco de Saria. You should visit him at his estate today. Other than that, you should talk to the mayor and the cap garrison captain, but don't expect much of a from a politician, even a good one like Mayor Reina. And a she's a soldier who's never seen a fight. Also, watch out. There's talk about one of those damn reporters buzzing around. Well, do you need anything from me or can you handle it from here? We, we got it, Commander. <laughs> all right. Well, if that's all, I have work to do. I suppose you do too as well. Good luck on your mission, recruits. Don't screw it up. <laughs> yes, Commander. So... Uh, she marches off. Um, you guys, uh, you do have access to now investigate the um, the three locations, the mayor's estate. Uh, sorry, yeah, the mayor's estate, the freelancer, uh, well, sorry, the mayor's estate, the Saria family estate, or the garrison headquarters. So, sounds like we should... Uh you know, check out the uh, Surya estate first, right? Yeah, it's, it, it, it sounds like that's where our, well, that's where our contract came from. So that's where we get information first. to start with. Pity, pity we can't drag uh, Olivia along. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think uh, if I remember, Olivia kind of escaped uh, that family life. So maybe, maybe <laughs> they don't have the best relationship. <laughs> Fair enough. She's definitely not in a rush to head back home. <laughs> um, all right, well, you decide to make your way to the Saria family estate to meet with the contract issuer, Don Marco de Saria, Marquis of Tercero Perdias, and heir to the House of Saria. The Saria estate is truly a marvel. It takes quite some time to get through the gardens. Um, and uh, the guards and butlers move, uh, they move very quickly to make sure that nothing slows you down or your company. So I'm actually going to move you all to the Saria. Yeah, and uh, I'm not sure property. if Ravamana has actually ever um, walked through such a rich estate, but she's also so large that she kind of got snagged on some of the, the garden while we were going through. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Maybe mess, messed up a topiary on the way. Um, so yeah, hopefully Don Marco's not too mad about that. That's that's okay. I can I could eat the, the uh, evidence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we have... Oh, hey, look, you're all already here. Um, I just have to reveal you to yourselves. Yeah. 
Show me your true form. <laughs> Ta-da! And to done. All right. So, um, the garden is in the middle of being maintained, although you aren't sure how much more could be done to sculpt the topiaries and hedges. You walk around the ground fountain that is home to the tall statue of Fortunato Soria, the greatest dragon slayer to ever live, and the man who established the Soria family. You find yourselves going through a pair of giant double doors, and now you are inside the estate. Once inside, marble floors and pillars greet you in the great hall, which is kept in absolutely pristine condition. The floors gleam and a maid near the edge of the hall looks at your dusty shoes in dismay. A butler welcomes you all graciously and he asks you to follow him to the parlor. Uh, the entire group can now perform a detect check uh, as a group check. I already have it set up. <laughs> uh, wow, I've, I've never seen a place like this, says just a lowly commoner. <laughs> By zero successes. Yeah. You realize you are in a house. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> the grass is gone. Uh, I love I, I love how it progresses up though, because it's Lorenzo with zero, Katarina with one, Simi with two, and Ravamana with three. Yeah. I'll have to make sure I roll third next time. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you guys are barely able to uh, catch this, but you do realize that the garrison guards, uh, who usually would guard a great house's estate, are missing, replaced by members of the National Army who are here in force. Uh you find yourselves brought into the parlor and are invited to sit next to the fireplace while a team of servants bring you grilled, a chilled glass of coffee with whipped cream and chocolate shavings. Uh, based on the color, a little rum may have been mixed in there as well. Uh, He's fancy. Yeah, Rava Mana actually downs hers in one gulp. <laughs> uh, a, serv a servant comes... Uh, scurrying over to quickly fill up top off your glass uh and you all hear laughter coming softly from the next room until the butler knocks gently at the door he calls through the door my lord you have some freelancer guests here to see you you hear the laughter stop and the sound of muscled muffled movements after a moment the door flings open and don marco de Soria comes into the room uh, here he is. It's a nice uh, to meet you, Don Marco. <laughs> Saria. Oh, Rava oh, Mana's at the oh. snack table, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> right. <laughs> over his shoulder, you see a beautiful woman who is not quite finished rebuttoning her uniform. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so... There entered. And you said a uh, um, uh, national army? Correct. Versus... Yeah, so national who army. Here? So the, the national army uh, is directly under the, the main government uh, and the royal family. The freelancers are outside of kind of all of that. They answer to the royal family but they are free to take contracts and orders from basically anyone. And then the garrison is more local, like uh, it's the head of the garrison is localized in each individual city. So it'd be like the local police versus the army. Okay. Um, so it, like National Guard are defending this place as opposed to local law enforcement. Yeah, that, that would set off some alarm bells in the back of my head. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, Don Marco, here's, because uh, uh, Simeon, you, uh, or sorry, uh, no, Lorenzo, you were the one who uh, saying hello first, I believe? Yes. Okay. Well, he, uh, he kind of bows a little bit, says, 
Welcome to my estate, freelancers. Please, I encourage you to enjoy the coffee. Um, behind it him, the quite delicious. Oh, <laughs> he nods and sees, and then uh, kind of takes a gander at Ravamana, who's downing at least her fifth cup. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, and she's also made her way to this to the snack table. Oh, okay, so excellent. She's, uh... she's like, okay, I see you are. Uh, over his shoulder, the woman speaks. She says, I'm Admiral Isabella de Martin of the Fourth Fleet. It is my pleasure to meet you all. While I'm sure you are aware of this, an admiral has no obligation to follow the instructions of any member of the freelancers. Of course, for friends of my future sister-in-law, I'd be happy to do such a favor. I do hope, I do so hope we shall see more of each other. Um, you guys can perform a group lore check. Lore, 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 lore. Okay. Can we though? And probably not. I've got one. Ooh. Yeah. Got five. Right? Yeah. No. Five, five on a group check. Yes. yes. One, yep. one, one, two. All right. So uh you guys, you all know that Isabella de Martin, uh that's that's a name you've all heard before. She's the niece of the current head of Great House Martine. Uh, this and you know that this is far more than just a simple dalliance. Uh, this could very well this marriage could very well uh, lead to a lasting alliance between two of the most powerful noble houses. Um, so we're now entering into a social conflict uh he's so uh don marco he says thank you for taking the time to come out and complete this contract i will answer whatever questions i can but i must admit i'm a bit distressed to see recruits sent for this mission no offense intended but shouldn't this be um for a more experienced team oh we are the best of the best yeah hmm. We graduated top of class. All right, uh, Lorenzo, would you like to make a convince check to convince him that you're the best of the best? Um, let's see. Unless you're lying, then you could always try tricking. <laughs> no, uh, no. <laughs> is is your convince better? Could we? Uh, now, it, I, now you, you could, could always have. You could have someone who's maybe better at talking uh, make, yeah. the, make the attempt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's good for me. Uh, 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 Simeon, uh, why don't you uh, uh, talk to the, the, the good duke? Or... Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> yes, uh, well, I mean, in... Of, uh, of 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 course, your contract is is uh, very important to to the freelancers, and that we we are um, we are newer certainly, but we are all very very top rated with within within our abilities, and we have had uh, the good word of of those higher up in the freelancers speaking for us. And I am confident. I have trained with my with my fellows here for some time, and I am confident that we will be able to um, complete your contract with, with with little trouble. All right. So uh, you should roll your convince check. Brilliant. Uh, my convince. Yes, a six. Four. Four successes. All right. Thanks. Well, uh, he simply says, fair, and I understand that these are trying times, so perhaps I am expecting too much of any one organization to uh, have enough hands to give their full attention to every issue. Uh, and if you're on, if you have been yet to be truly tested in action, perhaps this is the test we will need. Um, I will tell you that I have called in the freelancers because of, I suspect, corruption 
Mm. Isabella had requested Blue Knight uh, in investigations earlier, and uh, those are knights directly under the royal family, as opposed to uh, freelancers are, as I mentioned, separate. Um, and there have been other, uh, <coughs> excuse me, he wants to, uh, I'm sorry, I've totally lost my place and I'm apologizing. No worries. Problem. Uh, well, oh, know. yes. So, uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we requested Blue Knight intervention because we can, uh, we're aware that we can trust their discretion. Uh, I hope that I can also count on you to keep any rumors or uh, discoveries uh, discreet as I don't want any leaks to come back to sources I don't trust. Discretion is 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 the, the, the better part of valor and we believe very strongly in in uh, maintaining good relations, especially with our contractees. Yeah. And, and Rava Mana with her mouth so full, she couldn't even say anything anyway, she just goes. <laughs> <laughs> we won't have any trouble with her telling, any, saying anything. All right. Do, uh, do you think, uh, when you say corruption, um, who, is, who is the corrupted or who is the corrupting? Well, uh, our immediate suspicions are to the garrison captain, Cipriano. He's either turned a blind eye to these bandits, or he's just incompetent enough to absolutely accomplish nothing. Um, this is especially distressing since uh, Elena de la Vega, the young bride who was kidnapped, uh, I'm sure you know she's one of the passengers, uh, she's a personal friend of my fiance's. This is a tragedy, and poor Cipriano should be giving it uh, far more of a priority. Mm. Mm. So we can't uh, just to walk in and ask questions of Cipriano, or can we? Can we? Mm. That was, I think we can. I think there's no, uh, there's no problem with the uh, freelancers investigating, as well. Yeah, I'll tell you, if there were, it'd be a dead giveaway to his corruption. That's a fair point. And uh, I love this. Oh, sorry. Rob Lana has stopped eating by now, and uh, she says. I don't usually have problems getting answers out of people. And she kind of, her little spear, she kind of taps it on the ground. <laughs> All right. Um, well, uh, he's convinced that you guys are at the very least not going to go blabbing about any discoveries to everyone you meet. Um, and he seems... He seems pretty cooperative, so he's going to just, you know, so do you have any questions for me about the contract? So when so when uh, did the ship come in, or was it supposed to come in? I was supposed to come in two weeks ago, but uh, it's gone completely missing. No sign of it, and that's what's most distressing. And no sign of the money. Mm. There was never any distress call, or you just assume bandits have taken it over. <laughs> I assume nothing, but that is the report from the garrison commander. And if that if if that were the case, is it known where these bandits tend to lie in wait for those coming through, uh, particular areas where people would be perhaps more careful? Unfortunately not. Uh, again, as I mentioned, the, the dear captain has yet to turn up pretty much any useful information, at least that he shared with me. 
uh, I would highly recommend uh, asking him. Maybe you'll be able to get a straighter answer than I have. So I so so I don't know how how it works in this universe. This is player to to GM. Um, yeah. Would 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 something like a, a flight plan have been registered to or or some way to be like that? I as a pilot would know, you know, what direction is 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 this thing coming from, and could we track it along that way? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there are there is a flight plan. Like you you would know. There's going to be a manifest that you would mm -hmm. also know, um, and and all of that information uh, would definitely be part of the garrison's uh investigation but it's not necessarily like if either the garrison is not communicating with don marco or if they just did not do a proper investigation so i think that his uh don marco's frustration is in getting hearing nothing and not knowing why hence him suspecting corruption okay or or incompetence Either way, one's almost as bad as the other. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. So, so, but he doesn't have the flight plan. Don Marco does not. Okay, all right. He has the manifest, and that's where he knows all the passengers and stuff. Sure. Is there? Uh, can we take a look at the the manifest? Sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Just look it over and see if any names kind of jump off or kind of anything that that, that, that might have been someone on that, that we recognize as a, a name, name um of a the bad names. actor on the inside or a, a an obvious pseudonym like John Smith. Yep. So I actually just shared it with you. It should be visible mm -hmm. to all players on the uh roll twenty. Mm -hmm. Um, there's actually a passenger manifest. Look at you. Ooh. This is cool. And oh, there's interesting the names that are missing. Mm -hmm. So this is the these are really the ones that stand out. Or is it literally that's one, two, <laughs> 77, 78, 79, 80? One, two, many lots. Yeah, that's uh literally what it says what is it? Uh, sorry no uh, it, it does go in, sorry you're right yes there is a gap there of uh that would be filled in yeah but those are the important ones okay wait does only don marco have the two both copies Here i see there there's one that was the original manifest and the other the official manifest that was given to the garrison. Yeah. Does, does the garrison have both of these? Uh, uh, so this is what uh, Don Marco has. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, so there's names that are missing, which is interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get. I think. I think they're the, the, the to the GM. The thing. The reason that I'm I'm confused a little bit is it talks about you have two copies. So we haven't gotten right. another copy yet. Uh, you know what? It, I, yeah, I don't think you have yet. So. Yeah. Oh. So, pretend that we don't know that part yet. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, we, no, so no, that's what, cool. What I version? Were, what, sorry. What version were we given? You were given the the copy with the um. With the four names. The name with the full names. Oh, the original. With, with all okay. the names. You, from Don Marco, you get the original with all the names. Okay. Because oh, he has yeah. the original passenger manifest. Okay. So this, we as, our characters have only seen this version, but essentially when we Correct. see another version Correct. from the garrison, it might be different. Got it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Oi. Hmm. Right. Well, um, did you guys have any more questions? Well, let's see. So, you you mentioned the the money, Don Marco. Um, is that uh, was that uh, coming to your estate, or was it where was it uh, where was it supposed to go? Since uh, no, it, it was. I thought I asked him. I thought I asked. It was him. heading well to the estate to be collected and then uh, transferred to the royal family. It's 
uh, the city, entire city's taxes and makes up a, quite a hefty sum. I'll also uh, advise you to keep that part of this quite down low as uh, it, the transportation of that money was kept completely secret. That's no one was supposed to know that that money was on board. And that was my next question about who would know that who, what the, that it was on board. Uh, the captain of the ship, um, the garrison, who would know? Uh, honestly, I believe the only people that would know that it was on there were the people that were receiving it and that were loading it. Um, mm. Like, it was truly need to know only. And do you know if it was hidden? Like if somebody was putting on a, a chest that said taxes on it, of course everybody would know. But <laughs> if they were putting in the, another box or another, do you know if it was hidden? Correct. It, it would have been disguised, yes. Do, do you know what it was disguised as? Um, unfortunately, it, it, I mean, yes, it would have been in a plain crate that would have you know, a uh, secret marking on it to uh, represent that it was the taxes so that it would not be mistaken by the recipient. However, uh, if the, you know, I'm assuming that the attack on the airship uh, was either by someone who knew to look for it. And in which case, you know, I would expect that it was found or it was, uh, by someone going after the passengers, in which case the tax money may either have been discovered by just general looting of the entire, all the cargo, or might have been even left behind and suffered whatever fate the airship suffered. It might give us something to look for, though. Thank you. Well, thank you all for stopping by. I feel much relieved to have you all here. I apologize for doubting you in the first place. It is simply hard for me to trust anyone easily at this time. I will see what I can do on my end, and perhaps I will telephone your chapter house later. Divine bless your search, freelancers. Uh, with that, Don Marco and Isabella stand up and sweep out of the room, returning to the adjourning room once more. The butler politely coughs and motions to the door, and you find yourselves being guided out of the mansion. Yeah, and uh, before we leave, food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Ravamana, knowing that we will likely be speaking to the garrison leader soon, that sounds like doesn't have a great relationship with Don Marco. She gets an idea, and she's gonna try to pocket the um, the cup that her uh, her iced coffee was in. Okay, the butler. Uh, you know what? Make a stealth roll. Or no, Guile, well, sorry, Guile, Guile. Oh, is that what Guile's for? Okay. It's, uh, Guile is for like pickpocketing. And okay. Ah, picking. okay. I'm I thought that was not trick. super strong on this, but uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll get some Tell intense. Oh my God. Okay. Only because that tent exploded. Right, okay, well, so. Um, the butler kind of looks at you suspiciously. It looks like he might have thought he saw something, uh, but he isn't sure enough to confront you on it, and you managed to get it in your pocket. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> um, take some pastries. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't mind that much. He, he sees that, and he's kind of uh, rolls his eyes at you all. Um, yeah. And and as we exit, I think Ravama is going to also look up and down these uh, guards, just kind of scope them out. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, they're definitely they look like they mean business, and they are armed to the teeth. But they're uh, they're just your standard blue knights. They're ro royal army. She stands up a little taller and thinks herself, I could probably take them. <laughs> Likely. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, you find yourselves back on the street and it's time to do some more legwork. Uh, you had two other locations uh, available. 
I think the garrison might be oh. most useful at the moment. Yeah. 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 See what, what sort of information they've managed to gather. I would be very interested to see a flight plan for that them for that ship. And we can see how their both of how their stories match. Or don't. Mm. Mm. Or don't. Exactly. Because if there is corruption, the, the way to suss it out is going to be seeing where it doesn't sit and sit right. So uh so when we go and talk to the garrison, let's say that we haven't come here yet, but we're gonna go talk to them. Mm. That won't really work with my <laughs> cup pilfering plan. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But, and, and 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 I don't think that it would it would it would ring false only because we are we're, we're contracted to them and it wouldn't yeah. make sense for us to go to the garrison first. But we, but we don't have to just go out there and go, okay, guess we've just been over there. You know, wait till it no. comes out. Wait till it comes out. Well, at some point, we will have to say we have been contracted by yes. in order to find this ship. Yes. Yeah, but let's maybe get a sense of how the garrison leader feels about Don Marco, and perhaps we feel the same way. I will say he definitely knows that you've been where the contract came from. Yeah. Um, so with that, you head to the garrison headquarters in the Blue Stone District. The headquarters are a stout building made of solid stone. And it appears to have been untouched for about 200 years. The dark gray stone is unpainted and the bright warm uniforms of the garrison soldiers stand out against the walls. You pass through the first checkpoint where a garrison soldier looks you over and identify, uh, looks over your uniforms and identification papers with unmoving and stern expression. After a moment, he gives you a wave to open the gate and uh, followed by a quick salute. You notice that... Uh, Seeing that actual freelancers have arrived, he's all business. Um, once inside, the soldiers are all attempting to get a look at you guys as much as the nearby officers will allow, eager to catch a glimpse of some real, real knights. Uh, the captain's office is in the central location, and uh, you'll find your way there with no trouble. You enter the double doors past a pair of guards who don't seem to acknowledge you at all. All right. Um, so it's just, it's important to notice that the status of garrison soldiers are basically just, like I said, they're police. They keep the province safe, but they take their orders directly from the great houses. So these guys would answer directly to Don Marco. Okay. Right not the nation overall. Um, and so the, you know, the commander of the, or the captain of the garrison should be having a really strong relationship with the family. The fact that it's not is uh, where communication break de breaks down. Uh, what, oh, is Surya, Surya is the only great family in this city. In this city, yes. Yeah. Uh, once inside, a receptionist sits at the desk in front of you uh, with a door just past his shoulder. The door has the name Captain D. Cipriano painted on its frosted window, and a single purebred Skylos is guarded, posted guard next to it. The guard stiffens as you all enter, sitting straighter, and the receptionist stands up and offers you a quick salute, saying, Freelancers, welcome. Let me see if the captain is available. Thank you kindly. He runs past the guard and into the door. For a moment, you hear a deep voice inside the office in the middle of delivering a scathing rebuke to an unseen person. The door closes and you all wait for a few minutes. After a moment, the door reopens and the receptionist comes out again. I'm sorry, the captain is currently busy with an urgent matter. Would you mind waiting for a moment? He'll be right with you. You mate. Sure, we'll be more than happy to wait. Thank you. Rava Mana looks around, kind of coffee snacks, <laughs> without saying that. <laughs> yeah, there are coffee none snacks. here. It all runs together into one word. <laughs> this is far less posh than Don Marco's estate. Uh, well, you all take a seat. You try to get comfortable, but it's very difficult as the benches are hard. Almost as the, if they're designed for discomfort. Uh, 
The constant sound of muffled arguing and a ticking clock grates on your ears, and you all begin to fidget. After a while, you hear the captain slam a receiver down, making the receptionist and guard jump slightly. You expect him to come uh, out the door fairly soon, but he doesn't, and the clock ticks by minute after minute. You begin to get a bit restless. Yeah, uh, this is taking a long things. time. Is there anything else to look at in this in this office or this this front area? There's just there's truly nothing. It's just the it is just. Yeah, Katarina is, is is basically bouncing at this point. <laughs> um, when Let me see if I can reveal areas. I don't. I think that it's you're looking at just a black rectangle. Correct. Area. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, uh, when when he was shouting into what I assume is is a, a phone or right. phone like oh, equivalent. Oh, oh, oh. A what? A phone. Okay. Um, were we able to pick up anything that he was saying? Um, I'll let you guys make a detect check to try and understand, but it Sounds was pretty good. muffled, so that would definitely be at disadvantage. Okay. And that'll well, be the target. All number. of us or just Simeon? Uh, whoever's trying to listen. So I'm I mean, trying to li- I, I'm we probably were so there. bored we had nothing else to do but try That's to listen. Right, just like. But at disadvantage, you said. So yeah. eight or above. Correct. And Great. while we were doing that, uh, we got 500 bits from Tamago Tora <clears throat> for the GM. Ugh. Oh. Um, and uh, Brian, if you could tilt your, if there's a way to tilt your camera back so we oh, see more of your head. That yep, I great. can't see my own uh, screen. Let's see about that. There okay, we go. Better? Okay. There we go. Cool. Yes, much better. Well, I have two successes. So what are we rolling? Uh, you're rolling for detect, Ooh. and you are at disadvantage. Wow, three with disadvantage, Rabamana. Well done. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of tens. <clears throat> yeah, pass some of that luck over this way, man. <laughs> Don't be so tense. Wow, Lorenzo too. Wow, even yep. even with my zero successes, we still got eight. Well, you guys. Uh, you guys were able to hear a bit. Um, you definitely heard the word freelancers and uh, you heard the phrase, get it done. But that, you know, those, those two things are all you were able to make out, uh, even with an immense amount of successes at being behind closed doors. Um, that being said, uh, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make sure. Um, after quite a long while, the door does swing open and a tall, thin man with a meticulously groomed mustache appears. He waves you all in with a heavy sigh and stomps back to his desk. You honor me with your visit, knights. He gives a grin and stands up to open a cupboard nearby. Can I interest you all in a spot of wine? I'm afraid it's all I have to offer guests. Wine would be lovely. Thank you. Uh, let me re- reveal areas. I want to actually let you guys... You guys can move your characters into his office once I've revealed it. Here you go. All right. I'm going to look at this suit of armor that is here. <laughs> And not drink the wine, because that is not what uh, common folk do. <laughs> Just very curious about his, him and his desk, so I scurry up. <laughs> All right, so now that you're... Oh, uh, yeah, now that you're inside his office, you get a good look at the Captain. He looks like he's been awake for several days straight. You see a nearly empty coffee pot sitting cold on its side. And uh, cigarette smoke in, is thick in the air. Uh, Simeon, you particularly are having a difficult time uh, as your strong nose is making it particularly pungent. Uh, he smiles weakly and he greets you. Uh, a pleasure to make your acquaintance, freelancers. I am Dominic Cipriano, first son of the second house of Cipriano. 
To whom do I owe the honor? Yeah. Greetings and salutations. I I am uh, Simeon, and these are these are my friends, my my coworkers. Ravamana. Katharina, sir. It's me, Lorenzo. God damn it, Thomas. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let me guess. He's very exhausted. You can hear it in his voice. You've heard I'm an idiot who can barely put his uniform on. Yes. Divine knows what these people want from me. You can take a bullet for one mayor and the next to get elected treats you like you don't have a shred of honor. How am I supposed to stop those who disappear like ghosts? Anyways, I'm sure glad you are. I'm sure that you're here to interrogate me. Not glad you're here to interrogate me. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure you're here to interrogate me on my so-called incompetence. So go ahead, ask away. I'm, I'm much more interested in asking about the investigation. You are clearly at the, at the, you clearly are running yourself ragged on this investigation. I, I, we would like to be able to help. Yes, we could use our help. Since it, since it seems that our interests align in trying to um, locate this lost airship. And Ramana kind of gruffly saunders up and said, yeah, that plus that Don Marco is a prick and she pulls out the, uh, the cup she pilfered, slams it on the desk. She's like, a little souvenir for you. <laughs> Well, uh, he looks kind of like shocked at seeing the the Don's uh, cup. And he's like, oh, oh, uh, he kind of like pushes that back to you. Like he doesn't want to get caught having it. <laughs> um, but he kind Maybe of I'll also. Maybe I'll forget it's there when I leave. There you go. He also kind of smiles a bit at you guys and uh, says, well, I don't usually like uh, appreciate outsiders stepping into my department and my investigations, but I have a good feeling about you. Uh, so you guys should make a convince check here to try and help ease him into uh, your presence. Not my strong suit, but it's, it's, it's a, a it's, it's a, a group. group it is a group check. Okay. I was about to be really annoyed if I'd gotten zero with <laughs> raw while rolling six. Do we want to uh, use any inspiration on this before we do? Because what do we your... have? We have? Oh, you got three successes. I got three. Katarina got I, two. I got zero, unfortunately. Let's use it. We've got bits. Four. Oh, so if, I, eh, I'm only one, adding one. one. Just do one. Just add one. Just add one. Okay. We'll use one bit to add one die, which only makes it convince. Yep. Okay. That'll make it a five. That's pretty good, man. Well, you know what? Good thing. At least you had that dice. (laughs) (laughs) We'll say that's the dice, right? Yes. All right. Six successes. Well, you definitely have, uh, you see that he's taken a deep breath and calm down he says i'm i, I apologize uh I, I i admit the don marco threw me for a loop i i believe i'm handling this investigation to the best of anyone's ability but the bandits have just been disappearing even they even stole a garrison airship a snapper it's a light destroyer and it it was used that's how they captured the icicle in the first place was using one of our own airships that's dangerously clever these bandits sound awful how long have they been operating they've been attacking here for quite some months uh based on my reports it seems i mean they seem to be popping up all over the the air the district but uh and in groups that indicate there could be between 30 and 50 bandits total that's quite yeah. that's quite a lot my goodness wow they would need that many to be able to herd that many people off an airship yeah gets and get strong enough weaponry nah 
but uh, hmm. but yeah, if they haven't. And, and what? Uh, and and uh, what? What were they doing? Giving the airship for? I mean, were they do their people? Who who was on it that they were uh, kidnapping, or were they just stealing the ship? Unfortunately, we don't know their motivations. Uh, as I said, with them just disappearing, uh, we have had little opportunity to interrogate anyone. Uh, we did uh, send out an investigation to the lo to the actual location of the uh, the last known location of the icicle, and you know. Uh, Don Marco even actually sent out, I believe, one of his uh, the Blue Knights uh, Knight Shakti, or Shakti. And uh, they actually ambushed the investigation team, uh, killing the Blue Knight there and destroying her armored car. It just seems, and then them disappearing before any further follow up could be made. Seems like these are well trained in individuals. So, I, I'm have they come back since the airship was stolen? The last airship was stolen. No, but it's only been about two weeks. Uh, it the attacks are usually infrequent enough that mm. we can't really predict when they're gonna happen. And, and it was a stolen ship? The ship was not downed out of the sky? Correct. We found the, uh, we found the ship actually uh, fairly nearby, um, and the weapons and several uh, key pieces of equipment had been stripped off of it, which makes for some heavy armament that the bandits are now in possession of. Do you have a list of what was on the ship? Uh, not the full. I don't have the full list. I do have the passenger manifest. Uh, and if, if you also have the, the, the flight plan, I'd be interested to, to see that as well. Yes, it was on its way to... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm blanking on the name of... The Grotto? Yes. It's all, I believe it's all, it was. It's all right. You're you're exhausted, Captain. It's <laughs> we Captain. understand. Uh, but yes, uh, thank you. And so it would have been a straight flight from here to there to deliver the tax money and the passengers. Did there's left here to go there, or was and it there? and vice versa? It's. Um, Oh no, it was leaving here. Mm. Yes. There's been no messages, no ask for ransom, nothing? Nothing at all. When, when you found the ship, were there people, their bodies? We found the missing garrison airship Duh. that had been stolen. Duh. We did not, we never found the icicle. Got it. They may have put all the equipment on the icicle. That's our estimation. That's going to be a tough nut to crack for anyone who chases that thing. Uh, and, you, you know, although infrequent, you said the bandits have struck before. Have there been any similarities with those ships? Um, We've had s some attacks, but most of them have actually been on the city itself or on uh, ground traffic, not usually on airships. Mm. Nothing this scale. I never believed them capable of it. Bandits attacking the city? Well, I mean, within the city and disappearing, not wow. so much in, in force. Like, as I said, uh, I never anticipated they had the means to captain an airship like this but it would take the 30 to 50 crew uh so you know we must be looking at a large or opera larger operation than i ever deemed possible well if we could see that uh the the paperwork that you've come across that that might help us absolutely 
Uh, so he does, he hands you the, you know, the flight plan and the, the other manifest, passenger manifest. Um, and you notice that here, the, na the few names are missing. Do any of those four names that are missing ring any bells? Do they do they sound like criminals that the that are wanted across the the nation or powerful? Do they, do they sound do they sound familiar for any reason? Uh, to you, not specifically. Okay. But uh, I guess the real question is: Are you sharing? the other manifest with him or are you guys comparing them in front of him and that's basically what i i, I kind of tried to look at simeon and yeah I, yeah i wouldn't share i don't it. yeah i don't think it'll be something we discuss after we leave i think yeah because well while, while my impulse is to say that someone doesn't stay awake for a week on something that he's corrupt and trying to cover up he may actually just be incompetent <laughs> <laughs> So either way, I, I'm I am loath to share that information at the moment. Yeah. Um, uh. He mentioned so uh, out of character. I noticed he mentioned the tax money. Was that something that, that the garrison would know was coming here? Yes, his his actually so leaving here and his men were the ones in charge of loading the taxes on board the icicle. Got it. Okay, I, I was like, wait a minute, is that is that a clue that he just said that? <laughs> yeah. No, no. Good, good call. Good call, because. But yeah, somebody they had the, it left from here, so they had to put other stuff on it. Yeah, but they were the ones who put it on, so that okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, if you have any more any specific questions for him, yeah, uh, she, uh, Rob Monash is gonna say, yeah, uh, these uh, blue knights. I mean, th those are the ones at the Surya Estate, right? Yes. At the uh, Surya Estate, how long has that been going on? Um, he. Don Marco, as I said, he no longer, well, he never really trusted me, uh, but he's, ever since the airship went missing, he, so about two weeks, he sent, uh, he dismissed the garrison guards that were normally stationed around his estate and replaced them with, uh, I guess, those he thought he could trust more. Again, I don't know what he expects me to do about it. Everyone is stretched incredibly thin right now, and city city forces more so than others. Out of out of curiosity, um, the the loading the tax money onto the airship was that a very specific group of of your of your soldiers who who did so? Is that something that that was kept very Hush, hush. It, it was um, only, I mean, they wouldn't have even known necessarily which uh, which crate was the actual tax money, but they would have known that the, a small portion would have known that the tax money was there and to be keeping an extra weather, where, uh, extra weather eye out for any trouble. You know, it was a added security, really. Sure. Um, how many would you say are in that small number of those who knew? Six. Is there any way that we could speak with them? Um, unfortunately, several of them are off duty right now, uh, but I can gather up the list and I can send that information to the chapter house. That would be appreciated. I, I I just worry that there may be that there may have been a leak at some point. No reflection on you, of course. When you get someone drunk and they talk a little bit too much, sometimes I wouldn't know anything about that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm side eyeing my vice hard, and it worries me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, he said he kind of. Uh, Looking around the room, he says, well, I admit when I heard freelancers were coming in, I was worried. Your lot doesn't exactly have the uh, best reputation among the garrison officers, if you didn't know. Quite glad it was your team, and I hope we can work together to put a stop to these bandits. If you find any more leads, telephone my office later. The chapter house will have a telephone you can use. 
farewell. And uh, he's going to kind of like just dismiss you all. Uh, you do have, I'm going to move you guys back to the map now because one of his clues uh, did unlock another. Uh, oops. I just moved well, this myself. Is, and this is I, fun. It, it, it's like a Bioware game. You, 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 you get the right conversation options and you unlock places. Yeah, so he actually unlocked uh, the murder scene of, and like, um. basically the crime scene. Yeah. Yeah. And as you're loading that, I will say that as Ravamana leaves, she kind of eyes the cup on the desk and says, "My, well, I got all my stuff," and kind of <laughs> gives the garrison leader a look, like, "Please, please take this." I, I... Uh, he's, he's, take he's, a little, he's a little stressed. Oh, the poor thing. He's afraid that the guy's going to see it, or somebody's going to see it, and be like, "Yeah, yeah." All right. <sighs> So you guys, uh, mm. you now have access to, I think that the, the mayor's house is down here if you wanted to talk to the mayor, but then the murder scene is up here. You guys want to do, do first? Ha- I mean, do we have any indication that the mayor has any useful information? I mean, uh, so far, I believe the only information you've uh, heard about her is from Captain... Or, uh, uh, from Commander Halima. Yeah. And that she basically said, what use is a politician going to be? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But but a politician may know something about the other people that we're looking at. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's go have a look at the murder scene. Yeah. I agree. Okay. And, and as soon as I step outside, it's like sneeze multiple times to try to get all the cigarette smoke out of my house. <laughs> so this is, this is where the um the garrison sent people to look to go after the uh downed airship yeah and actually uh this is also where don marco sent the blue knight as well and that's Mm. where he got yeah yeah and the the blue knight uh she actually um she her name was uh let's see if i can remember her name uh shakti shakti I yeah, Knight sure. Shakti got murdered there when they were ambushed. Got it. So let me. My, if if the word of freelancers arriving has spread so far, and everyone is aware that we are here and coming, maybe we don't go straight out there. That's what I was thinking. We should go talk. Ambushes to the are not fun unless yeah. you're the one setting them. But Ravaman is not no. scared. <laughs> but if we do this first, then then we have some stuff to talk to the mayor about. Maybe. Fair enough. And just make it make very sure that I have my weaponry about me. Did yeah. the yeah. garrison leader indicate like how the knight was murdered exactly based on evidence? Oh, sorry, hold on. I accidentally activated sticky keys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hate that. Uh, um, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was right. about, about being ambushed, and even her armored car couldn't save her, right? Uh, yeah, just uh, she and her armored car got caught up in an ambush, so they just got gacked yeah also mean that the weaponry is powerful enough to get through armor well yeah. we know that they had the armory from the right. stolen airship yep yep that's heavy cannons mm-hmm. so yeah people would have seen an airship oh well they, they recovered the airship they stole the guns so the guns are yeah. heavy they are indeed who's hauling those things around on their shoulder Let's go check out the murder scene. So you guys should all be uh, moved to the murder scene. Yes, sir. All right. Let me skip ahead a little bit. Oh, well. Um, oh, there's, I see question marks myself. Yeah. Murder scene. <laughs> all right murder scene uh, the murder scene is near to the town but just far enough away that it does take a fair bit of time to go out and investigate it's currently well past noon and if you leave now you may not be able to lead any uh, investigate any other leads today depending on how long you search the scene 
All right. Um, you all prepare yourselves to make your way to the site of the death of Senora Shakti at the gate. Uh, at the gate out of town, you find an armored car waiting for you, courtesy of Commander Halima. With with it is an aged driver from the Fourth Support Division, uh, another Zayat named Gavril Sporovnik. Gavril Sporovnik. 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 He knows the way to the murder scene and very little of the language of Talindia. Um. He, in, he very much his ears kind of perk up as he sees Katerina. He goes, come, uh, gesturing to the uh, front seat while motioning to the back with everyone else. He says, <laughs> I'll take you to the um, bloody ground. Uh, yes. Awkwardly, says, Rava Mana ended up in the middle seat in the back somehow. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh Never he fail. he invites Katerina to come and uh, sit up with him. Ah. <laughs> All right. So uh, he spends the entire drive uh, sharing stories about the motherland. He's reached pretty old age for a Zayat, uh, and he's just being wistful talking about it. Yeah, I will. I will. You know, explain. You know, my background there, and and. Basically, then tell him, you know, I'm so glad that we're free. And every once in a while, I'll go to, you know, tell the people in the back, oh, we're just sharing stories. Don't worry, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> I'm, just so I'm, mo- know. I'm mostly uh, just, just ignoring everything that's happening in the front seat and then uh, have, have the window rolled down a little bit to him. To, to... <laughs> <laughs> well, so there's room for six in the back. So everyone could sit in the back. Um, but there's also the main, You one of you could man the turret. Oh, <laughs> that's probably where, wait, the turret is where, like, Rava Mana may be appropriate for her height. Fair, yeah. Okay. That would work. That's probably where she is, then. <laughs> who, who of us is the gunner? Lorenzo. Yeah, Lorenzo goes, and but <laughs> Rava Mana's like, I, I, need, I need the space, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I'll lean with my head outside the opposite window from Simeon. Uh, it's gonna be quite the sight for anyone who comes across. <laughs> I'm sure, but I'm, I'm I'm also I mean it's not just because I'm I'm a dog. It's because I'm 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 trying to get all of the information that I can via smell on the way as, as we approach with my keen nose. But I can't help. And anything. also because I'm a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, it's a decidedly oh. long drive, and after a while, he grows so- quiet. The ride is not an easy one, and your driver doesn't seem to be keen on t- taking the roads. But the armor, uh, armored car is certainly up to the task. Still, you feel every stone he runs over. After a drive that seems to last forever, you see the countryside fly by the narrow windows, uh, the narrow window slits in the back of the car. The car comes to a shockingly sudden halt, jostling you all, and the driver bangs his hand on the wall, separating the driver and the near shouting, We are here! Uh, you step out of the car to find the burnt wreckage of another armored car. There's clear evidence of explosives damage, and you already see the painted on initials of a scrapyard's claim to the twisted metal. It's a good thing you made it out here before they did. Hardly find any clues if it's gone. In the distance is a burrowed out cave. Something's down there you may want to investigate quickly before it comes up. Uh, so, um, beg pardon. <laughs> I said, I said, if something is down there, you may want to investigate quickly before. So, if anyone is down in this cave down here, you're going to want to investigate quickly. Oh, oh, so they don't ambush us, essentially. Right. Yes. Or sure. that's, that's a good good call. Obviously, either that or <laughs> bodies. Mm. Mm, right. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I. Yeah. So each of these question marks, these are clue markers, and they're all something that you can investigate. I think they're even, most of them are even labeled. Well, I would okay. say that we were probably trained whenever investigating an area to make sure it's clear of danger. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. And so as soon as we see the cave, I mean, my instinct would be that like 
we just instinctually know like that's the first thing we got to clear before we can look at just else. go investigate yeah so i'm good i'm 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 pretty quiet i can get up close and have a peek inside mm -hmm. okay so you guys gonna uh, investigate the cave yes. yeah i'll stand back know. as like our you know I, I I tell my my new friend to stay in the vehicle. <laughs> I'm gonna okay. move and just kind of take cover. And uh, actually, that's that's long range. One, two, three, four Let's into the see me. into the cave. Yeah. How far can the bolt action rifle go? Range is long. I can't see me. Where am I? Up, up, uh, up here. Top right. Top right. Top right. I should be pinging it. I can't see it. There it is. There's the ping. You don't you see it? You can hold down shift and, and, and do ah. the ping and it'll drag everyone over to look. I saw. You can see my purple yeah top uh up and right from there oh there's more there's yep. more there <laughs> but wait I, I i i had one excuse me bless you all right i was thinking i was by that i was by the car so okay yeah so, I'm not... is, mm -hmm. are people making detect checks here is that what's going on uh, I think we're we're ready to see if we're going to get ambushed out of this cave as it's being explored. Okay, so in that case, yeah, I guess uh, make a group detect check. All right, do you guys want me down there with you or or back up here, down here with I you? I feel like I don't necessarily know if I'm going in the cave, but I'm like riding right outside. Yeah. Um, in case I hear anything, I'll rush in. In case something comes out. I'm ready to attack. Okay. And I'm going to go prone out here and just kind of right. keep a low profile and have the, the rifle pointed down range. Okay. <laughs> so should it only be the people going into the cave that make, or, or at least looking yeah, inside the cave? Yeah, the people who are able to like, you know, anyone who's going to be like right up in this uh, area, the, you know, the section in red, um, should definitely make their detect check. All right. So if we go across this red line, is what you're saying? Uh, not. You don't have to cross over oh, this red good, line. Good, 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 you just. Good, good, you can be out here. Okay. So yes, I will do that. <clears throat> my detect check. Yeah, I'm definitely sniffing. Okay. And yes. Yeah, so in that case, your nose will give you advantage to anything you're finding Ooh, in here. Nice. All right, so that's three. Um, there's a lot of like just wreckage kind of uh, in there. And it looks like this has been a place where stuff had been dragged. Um, there's a lot of like scrapes and stuff along the walls uh, and on the ground. And, you know, just a giant rock uh, in the middle of the cave. But doesn't look like there's any place for uh, any, you know, people to ambush you. Um, yeah. Does that rock look like it was placed there or like it's a natural occurrence? Um, I'm going to ask Simeon to make a lore check. A lore check, you say? Oh, mm -hmm. Goodness. Goodness gracious. Two. Good lord. Okay. Uh, you kind of take a look back at the wrecked car, and then you take a look back into the cave, and you're going to give a quick shout of warning to get back uh, as the rock starts to move. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So you are able to give yourselves enough warning to start legging it back to the uh, and get yourselves set up however you need to. Uh, but yeah, that is the den of a scrap crab. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, so if if I if I am here, I can make the I can make a shot with a bolt action rifle from where I am now over here. Uh, yes. Okay. Ravamana's probably actually gonna hold her position. So I'm quiet. I can begin any conflict undetected as long as we are not ambushed. But does this count as an ambush? Uh, this does not count as an ambush you okay. will absolutely begin this uh started as undetected all right okay, but I, um, be in this I am i am i also have quiet yeah uh you all have an opportunity to ready your weapons yes. uh but you also all know from your basic training that nothing aside from heavy or sustained firepower is gonna bring this creature down right uh, wait say that again Nothing, Nothing short of heavy or sustained firepower is going to bring this thing down. Well, oh, right. So these melee weapons aren't yeah. really going to do anything Let's, then. So yeah. should we just back off, back off, back off and, and see if it comes out? Yeah, well, I think so. The armored vehicle has, has a turret. That should be heavy <laughs> firepower, right? Uh, yeah. it, it has a cannon, a revolving cannon. Yes. Wonderful. Let's Lorenzo, <laughs> you're up. Yes, I'm going to run, get up. Sling the rifle and hoof it on top of the car. All right. So while you guys all set up, you know, get yourself set up and run away. Uh, really? He is coming out. Okay. So he'll be about here by the time you guys get there. And, you know, as far as he's concerned, he sees uh, a new a new something to scrap. Oh, man. And as we are getting into this combat on um, this brand new system called Freelancer Skies Over Talindia, we've just been raided by Ink and Liar. Welcome. And Guys, welcome. For joining us. Uh, this is currently on Kickstarter right now. Check it out. It's been, it's been a lot of fun to play so far. So far. There are, See how much we get animal, beat up. <laughs> animal, right? <laughs> airships, dragons, rifles, and cannons. And giant crabs covered in cannons. <laughs> can uh, can Rava Mana go to the other armored car That's... and just try to see if the other cannon still works? That's uh, the other cannon is it's completely wrecked. That, oh, that got entire it. Okay. Uh, thing, but you know you can definitely hang out there. Yeah, I was going to no, use no, no. it to hide. I was going to use it to hide. So. Rava Mana okay. doesn't hide. That's fair. Ravamana yeah, does not hide. <laughs> she'll she'll ready like as a line of defense in case she feels like the scrap crab is getting too close. All right. Uh, I need to move the zoom window. <laughs> so I have I have suppressive on my on my rifle. Does that mean that I could like try to hold it in place? Um, so suppressive is going to reduce the number of actions that something will have if it gets hit with it. Um, it should be in your. Uh, in your notes and uh there we you know in the demo notes that we sent out there's like the um list of uh item uh keywords and special abilities so you should have that in your inbox sure uh there's also you know for quick reference there's the um combat actions and injury charts already available Yeah, I, I just have a medium weapon in my fists, so I think I'm going to try to stay back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've got cover. Equipment traits. What was it? It was... Suppressive. Mm, that's not in these. It's not. Interesting. So that must have gotten missed over. Yes. Uh, well, so if you fire a suppressive weapon at them, they have to make uh, a resolve check. If they pass the resolve check, then nothing happens. If they fail it, 
then they are going to have uh, one fewer action uh, okay. for the next round. So. And we get three actions per round. Correct. You get three actions per round, and uh, only two of them may be movement actions. Uh, so for an action, you can man the cannon, uh, whoever's going to man it. So you will have to actually man it in game. Okay. Uh, so everyone, uh, I just wanted to make sure everyone ha ready with their equipment and stuff, ready for combat. Yeah, I, I'm not yeah. sure how Katarina could do any combat right now. Because <laughs> um, I have stealth, but so I can become... He can't do see you me, have, but... Do you have any weapons? <laughs> a crossbow, which is a medium. Well, you are you are in medium range. But I thought you said that it wouldn't hurt. A medium wouldn't. Uh, wouldn't so hit. it's or sustained fire, right? So heavy weaponry is able one way to really do it, or continuous fire of other weapons. Ah. So even Ravamana's, uh, you know, uh, you know, and fists can hurt it over time. It's just it's pretty gnarly and uh, okay, painful. So, yeah. So I am. Just pulling up. All right. Okay. And I can still be undetected even after I can, I shoot. So <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> so is that gunnery for the cannon? Yes, the cannon will use gunnery as opposed to uh, uh, marksmanship. Yeah, marksmanship. All righty, right. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go. Uh, initiative is not something that's rolled in this game. It's something that's entirely based off of your own agility. So who, uh, what are your guys' agility scores? And whoever has the highest agility is going to go first. Four. Three. All right, so, agil yeah. so agility fours are going to go first. All right. Well, I am going to try my markman sh marksmanship and shoot it uh, and hide. So there's also oh. um, <clears throat> one of the things you can do is is focus, um, which is like aiming. Do you want to yeah. go over that real quick? Yeah, oh, so yes. um, we have... Uh, the combat actions are in a handout, and I'll just show it to players real quick. Um, and this, so this will show you all the actions you can make in a combat check uh, and how they work. But um, yeah, you can move, okay. charge, strike, which is just make a prowess check, uh, um, focus, uh, finisher which is a melee attack action that um, it's one attack, but it deals extra damage after armor. Um, okay. So yes, yeah, so I can do a, I can do a focus and then a fire. Yes. So yeah, you can, yeah, exactly. You could focus and fire. You can even focus and then focus and fire uh, as long as you know, you can only focus a uh, number of times equal to your resolve before you have to do something else. Uh, but if you focus oh, cool. twice, you'll gain two automatic successes uh, for your next for your shot. And it says um, you gain automatic successes. Do you still roll all of your dice? Uh, like yeah, you, so you would roll all of your dice, but okay. then you'd add two successes to whatever your result is. Sweetness. Okay, so it's an yeah. addition. Got it. Okay, so that sounds good. Okay, so I go first. So I will do focus, focus, and then fire. Because I do have uh, my, my weapon is a slow reload, so it's going to so, take two. 
It's going to take yeah. two actions next time. So correct. So I might as well make this one count. Yeah, do it. All right. Focus, focus. Roll my marksmanship. Oh, good thing I, I added that. Um, so I got three successes. Okay. Well, you hit it. It's not particularly hard. Oh, I should also mention that it's uh, as a large target, you would be added. You would be rolling one additional dice. Uh, okay. In ranged. Oh, I would have. Okay. Oh, sorry. You know what? Uh, yeah. So you would be able to add one additional dice. Okay. So should I just roll one die? Yeah, just roll one dice. Okay. Yeah. Boom. Nah. All right. So, so I, got uh, my, I got my three. Yeah, your three. Well, that's enough to hit it. And so you look at your weapon's damage rating. Yes. It says damage six, piercing five. Okay. You do one damage. All right. I got so, it. So, yeah, it's uh, its armor is so thick that it, and, and it has a special rule, robust, so its armor cannot be penetrated. Uh, so no piercing. Gotcha. That okay. being said, um, yeah, you you hit and, it. So and, and I'm still undercover because that's my, one of my uh, undetected. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So you 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 fired. Yes. With a quiet weapon, you are now detected. But I should have mentioned you also would have had advantage on that because you were. Uh, undetected at the time. It so still, it's you, it actually really... would have been one additional success, but yeah, it still would have only done the one damage. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Trying to get all of those things in my oh, head. Right. Yeah. 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 This, this, this part, there's a lot of math. Yeah. So, uh, yep. Okay. Anyways, uh, now we're on to agility threes because you took uh, two focus actions. I'm so three. all of you agility threes can work it amongst yourselves to see who goes first. Maybe Lorenzo, since you I, are, think, I, think, have, I think Lorenzo go first. Have the cannon. <laughs> I'm going to hop up in the cannon. Blast away. <laughs> uh, so right. one action to hop in the cannon. Two to, can you focus on that? Or is yeah, it, you uh, can absolutely focus on an uh, artillery roll. <laughs> Essentially, you're calculating the... Uh, Yep. You're calculating, yeah, the uh, distance and range and everything and figuring it out. All right. So I've got a five on my gunnery. Let's see. So three, yep. Three plus two. So that's five. So I am going to uh, quickly share the armored cars profile with you. I realize you need the weapon information. All right. And what do I do with this? So uh, the armored car has the re revolving cannon. Yes. The revolving cannon. Um, let me just try and find out for you. Damage rating seven, seven piercing four. Rapid, rapid fire. fire. Yeah. So every time you fire, uh, perform a fire action with it, it fires four times. Ooh. So do you get to roll four times then? Yes, he does. Ooh. Cool. Dang. So push up and oh. enter in the in in the in the chat window. It's faster. Yep. There you go. That's okay. better. That's wow. better. That's better. Two, five, nine successes. All right. And so you did uh so each one is actually done separately. Okay, gotcha. so yeah, uh, you your first action was to get in the vehicle, yep. and then you did you say you focused the first time or did you just yep. fire? Oh, you, so I, you did focus. Okay. So your yep. first one had two successes, um, which is enough to graze him. Uh, your next one missed. You got the hang of it, though, for the last two, and they were direct yeah. hits. Uh, so, let's see, piercing four. I have a little bit of math to do. 
<laughs> so, uh, right. does this pierce? It does have some piercing to it, absolutely. Um, and the thing about the scrap crab is that every time you hit him with an attack, chunks of his armor are falling off. Ah. Ooh. So it's robust armor that can't be pierced, but it's getting less and less. Nice. Okay. Um, so right now, your damage rating is uh, seven, and you are beating... There it says one... Uh, so it is down to that. All right. Uh, he's taking a bit of damage and you definitely see chunks of steel flying every which way. Uh, and it's getting a little more aggressive, uh, as it comes straight towards the car now. Uh, I just made it angry. <laughs> any other, uh... Yeah, any other uh, agility threes can now go. I'm, I'm agility three. So I will, uh, I, I, I have the quiet, so I'm, so I'm undetected. So my shot, my, the shot will be at advantage. Um, and I will focus two and five and uh, I will focus one shoot and then, and then reload at the end of the turn. Okay. So yeah, you focus and you fire, and so you get to make your uh, your marksmanship roll. Yes. Also, do not be forgetting to tally uh, attempts. Oh God. <laughs> okay. Um, and so for focusing, we add we we add one, and then for uh, it being large, we add another die. Or yes, yes. Oh no, sorry, focusing adds a success. Okay. Adds a success, but yeah, you add one extra dice for it being large. Got it. All right, so that's three successes then. Okay, well that's a hit. Uh, and what is your weapons profile? My weapons profile is damage seven, piercing five. Okay, well, uh, you're getting it down. You really are, I promise. <laughs> uh huh, and 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 then I'll like pop out the shell, reload. Yep. Uh, well, it's now agility twos. There's no agility twos. Agility ones. So Ravamana. Yeah. Um. So I have the lunge um ability. So does diagonal count as an adjacent? Area? Correct. Yes. Okay. It, would, it would count as an adjacent area. And me and, moving to the corner since I'm staying within the area, that's not technically movement, right? Correct. You're, as long as you're still in that area, it does not okay. take a movement action. Yeah. So I am going to stay in my area so I don't have to use a movement action and use my lunge to be able to attack. Now, um, I don't remember. Did lunge say that you have to, you're at disadvantage when you attack the adjacent area? Hmm. Uh, yeah. Yep. That's okay. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a chance on that for this round and just see how it goes. Okay, and um, keep in mind you can always focus still with your spear. Yeah, or you can make multiple but attacks. she she wants to maybe try a two two action thing okay. after this, depending oh, on how it goes. Oh, I get it. I see where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so she's just gonna try uh, at disadvantage, um, mm -hmm. and do yeah, a lunge attack with her. Uh, with her spear. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, only two. All right, two successes. Uh, well, it it did something. You definitely, you know, you felt it scrape against not metal but like chitin. Okay, and uh, she's a little frustrated by that. It's like, oh damn crabs and so this time she'll actually focus uh and do um another do another attack um all right still with lunch yeah get it Whoa. there you go four all right so yeah that's uh that's four even with disadvantage so uh yeah that time it hits and what's your weapons uh damage profile Oh wait, but then since I focused, it's five. On oh, you're right. Two. So it is five. Yep. Uh, it's damage seven. Okay. It, um, 
It says piercing on my character sheet, but I don't see a number next to that it. That means zero. Okay. Yeah, piercing is like a value, like damage, and if Got it, it doesn't have it. Okay, so All right. explain. So it doesn't pierce through armor, um, but right. you, yeah. But I scrape off some. You do. Metal. You do scrape off some of the metal. Okay. Um, well, it's now the scrap crab's turn, and We're about uh, to everything. <laughs> he definitely is going towards the biggest meal that he's had in a while, and he'll move over to here. And he will perform a strike. So I have to roll dice now. And where's my dice roller? <laughs> there it is. I'm going to roll the dice public because I feel like that makes more sense here. Uh, and the other thing that I will do is... Um, I'm going to use one of my advantages. <gasps> because why not? It's there. Yeah, right? it's there. You might as well. Do it. Um, so target numbers are six. Oh, so you use two of your uh, advantage. Oh, uh, yeah. No, just one <laughs> advantage. That's just one advantage. Hey. It says seven successes, but I don't see. Oh, I have oh, it backwards. Did the backwards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Woo. There we go. So that is only one, one success. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, so now we look at what your defense is, which is equal to your agility, actually. Um, my uh, agility is one, but then I also have this note about natural armor plus two. So you would have damage resistance uh, because of the armor. Mm -hmm. uh, but does your spear have defensive? It does have defensive, yes. So your defense in when engaged in melee is actually mm -hmm. increased by one. So your defense is two, two, which makes this a miss. Nice. Yeah. Even with advantage, it's a miss. Um, yeah, so that was that was nice. Ducks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Duck and roll, so duck and roll. it's definitely going to attack again, this time without advantage. Wow. Still only one success. That is some rolling right there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Um, the, its turn is over. It moved and attacked twice. All right. Uh, so we so uh, sorry it goes back up to the beginning of the um yes. of the chart uh, Katarina right, Katarina um can i see it where it is right now yeah it's in the middle absolutely yeah yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's in the middle well i need i have a slow load so i need yeah. to do two for my reload correct and that means i only have one left yeah I now you well could fire. you yeah so you could either focus and then save it for the next round or just fire fire because she's into it yeah <laughs> every time you hit it you take its armor down a little bit so exactly uh some marksmanship yeah marksmanship i do not have any advantage or anything and roll three successes all right well that is a hit uh and what was your armor what was your piercing value on that again five five yes damage six all right. Well, you're actually going to pierce through its armor finally. Hey. You hear a satisfying crack <laughs> as the arrow actually hits a soft uh, spot underneath the the remaining scrap. Doing a little bit more damage than these other ones have been doing. Yes. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Katharina is very happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we're on to the agility threes. Take it away, Lorenzo. Okay. Um, pow, pow, pow. I'll shoot. All right. I'll the focus once to get a one automatic success. You're firing the cannon? 
Yeah. Ravamana's gonna duck. Right, I believe the uh, cannon. Actually, I believe the cannon is slow reload. Oh, okay. Oh. So I mean that makes sense. Though. Yeah, that gives you two, but you then do you I? Still do you know what? Hits. Uh, yeah. It goes four times. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, yeah. say it on, on on the armored car thing, but I I fully believe that it yeah. does. So. Especially if it fires four, it's, you got to jam four right. yeah. rounds into it. Children. All right, so I will then reload for two and then fire for once. Yeah. There you go. All right. Yeah. That's a way to start it. Oh, well, three um, successes okay. on the first one. Well, uh, and you said it was, what was its armor piercing value? Four. And what is its damage rating? Seven. Seven? Well, the first shot hits it square in the face. Um, and it needs to, it actually, uh, I just need to see what happens to it here as it takes uh, injury. You actually hurt the thing. Excellent. Excellent. And it is currently stunned. Ooh. So it is going to have uh, one less AP every turn. So that's not bad. No. The action point? Yeah. All right. So. All right. And with that, your next shot uh, was a miss. Your third shot and your fourth shot both glanced it but you've noticed that the things that the it the last few plates of uh scrap that your gun hit uh it's basically just a little naked crab now um excellent the little bits nice. of stuff like netting and stuff are no longer offering any protection yes excellent All right, Simeon. <laughs> All right, so that is Simeon. We're right. up to Lorenzo. Uh, we did. Oh, sorry, Lorenzo. sorry, Lorenzo. Then we're up to Simeon. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I will fire, reload, and fire again. Okay. So one success. I don't think is going to hit. Correct. It does not. Reload and fire again. Oh my god. Oh no. All right. That brings it to Ravamana. Uh, well, Ravamana, oh, now the crab is in her area and she sees it's not no longer armed, so she's going to strike. Um, okay. Crab is hot. <laughs> it's a steamed crab now, apparently. Ay, uh... yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you hit him. Uh... Oh, I did? Well, it's a glance, so it just does one damage. Okay, so that's not like a successful one. It's not a success. It's it's called a partial success. Right. So you're still scraping on its uh, on its shell. Yeah. So then I think this time, um, yeah, she's just frustrated that her first attacks are just not really hitting the mark, and she calms down a little. So this time she will focus first and then uh, do another strike. All right. So mind, now, I think you guys have been given a lot of uh, a lot of advantage tokens. I don't know how many you guys have now. I know we uh, should we use do, them. Yeah, we have two left. Okay, um, but okay. well, who needs that? So, yeah. Okay. So three, <laughs> but then I had focus, so really four. Yeah. Successes. So four successes. Uh, what's the damage rating Seven. of your spear? Seven, and you surpassed its defense by one, so you did eight damage. Nice. All right. So the spear just plunges deep into this crab and it's uh, emitting a high squeal as it lashes out. Uh, definitely not doing well, but it lashes out one last time at uh, Ravamana. Wait, that's our medic. <laughs> right? This I'm, is why I'm, you don't put the cleric in front. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty hardy. <laughs> That's why Elspeth keeps going unconscious. You know. <laughs> and yeah, it's not able to focus because he's, I mean, 
Uh oh, you did the wrong roll. <laughs> that's no okay. Confess. We can count. Well, we can. One, two, three. Yeah, that's three. Yeah. Yeah. So mine's, yeah, my defense is two. So that's definitely it. Yeah. So it's going to hit you. Um, it has a damage rating of eight. Ow. Um, now you're going to take away two points of that for your armor. Uh, oh, that's well, that's what that does. Well, so yeah, armor will just straight up reduce damage. Uh, a lot of your attacks would have been doing a lot of damage to him, but he had so much armor that they were doing the minimum of one. Got it. So, so then I took six points yeah, of damage. Yeah. And it has uh, blunt force. Um, Thomas, I believe you had up the uh, the, the keywords. Um, For do combat? You still, yeah. Do you still have that up or is that because I can right. find that. I don't see it here. Okay, I can find that pretty easily enough. Uh, um. Oh no, I accidentally closed the document. <laughs> that was not what I meant to do. Oh. That's okay. I it's right here. Is that oh that's equipment traits? Yeah, equipment traits. Blunt force. This weapon swings with great force and as such is difficult to block. Any attempt okay. to parry this weapon gains two disadvantages. Okay, ah, so you okay. you're not parrying it. All right. Well in that case, uh yeah, you're just gonna take the six damage. And that's it. Uh, he uh, he's gets one last action. He would have two more actions, but uh, someone shot him in the face mm -hmm. with a cannon. <laughs> Could that be? It's my job. <laughs> and that is five successes. Yikes. So this time he hits you again and uh, does his 11 damage minus yeah. two so nine more so now i've been taken uh to zero so i'll use a heroic action all right yeah so you spend one of your heroic actions and you roll one d10 okay. seven seven you are out cold you got knocked out, and so for a single combat round, you skip your next activation. Okay, but I now that I used a heroic action, I'm back up to full, right? You're back up to full health, yes. Cool. And how many heroic actions do you have left? I have two left. Yeah, so you're you're doing fine. Um, okay, and we go back up to the top, Katharina. <laughs> um, I have to reload. So that's two. And I'm going to yep. try to fire again. All right. Don't miss. <laughs> okay. Should we use oh. advantage? Yeah, let's let's use advantage on this. All right. Or so what well, do I do? I do it to six, Maybe right? just one. Just, well, unless we want to use two. How many bits do we have? Oh, we've got two. So I put it down to six. If we're using two, you put it down to six, but if we're only using one, you just add a dice. Right. So I think what you guys might do. Yeah. I think six? we'll put it down to six. We'll use two of them, put it down to All six. Right. Yeah. Yes. Roll. And Thomas, you kept track that I used two of you mine, correct? Are yes. Okay. You guys. No. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I rolled seven. Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The oh, dice are no. not happy with us right now, guys. They're not Apparently. happy. Well, I mean, it's roll twenty. Roll twenty is never happy with us. <laughs> I but but uh. They're not real dice. You don't need to worry about insulting them. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I don't know. We've, now you know why they're angry with you. I can't <laughs> move them away. I can't was, put them in the in the jail. There's yeah, no we, digital we, dice scale. We've insulted the algorithm so many times at this point that it's really mad at us. <laughs> right. Ugh. All right. I'm afraid I can't let you do that. 
Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, there you go. Uh, did I at least... Ma- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you made a mean face at it. Yeah. Uh, well, so agility threes. Go ahead. Uh, all right, I'll cannon. I will reload twice and then cannon once, which is actually four times. Which yeah. is four times, so. Come on. All right. Well, I see at least one that did two successes. And so, yeah, just absolutely pulverizing what's left of this crab. Um, the crab is just a smoldering pile of, well, just Crap. lead and, just, and gore. Uh, the crab is dead. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Good crab. It's dead. <laughs> Do I get to uh, revive myself? Yes. So you are you you do recover from yeah. being knocked unconscious. She wakes up. And, she's like, "What? I, I got him! What? What? Ugh. Right? Did I get him? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> crab. <laughs> exactly. It's well cooked in that shell. We didn't have lunch before we left. <laughs> I mean, clearly, I haven't eaten since the uh, Don Del Mar- Don Marco the estate. The estate. Yeah. <laughs> um all right well the scrap crab is dealt with so can um we, can we deal with uh searching now yeah you yeah. guys can uh, absolutely start investigating the, the right. crash site so how do we do that rob rob Amana would march straight to you know being an engineer she would march straight to the armor car yeah okay and uh you, you can have the out. one inside the car i've got some more over here to talk to to, to deal with too okay well, um, yeah, let me see. I have uh, the armored car itself. It's pretty badly burned. Uh, but yeah, investigating it, you can try and find anything left behind. Um, Is that a detect check? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Anyone, uh, if you're all investigating, everyone who's investigating something will roll together in one pool. So okay. for example, if everyone's split up, to investigate something different, you're all making your own separate roles. Uh, Maybe we should oh. pair off. It's also, but, it's been a while yeah. and it's now late in the afternoon. So it is getting dark. Okay. And it's going to be very, very difficult to find stuff in the dark. So, yeah. so we I would to... recommend making yeah. this quickly. Yep. Yeah. So it's, we, could, we could pair off to Lava Mana and both look okay. at over here where we're at. Okay. Sound good? Yep. All right. Lorenzo, you want to join me over here in the bushes? Sure. <laughs> Uh, thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I am relying more on my sense of smell to try and pick up anything that that is uh, that is remaining at, at this point. That will give you advantage Brilliant. to your roll. All so right, I'm so do... you guys can each make your rolls. Uh, D10. Okay. Hey, Lorenzo. Four successes. Why is it not updating? Oh, it is. Okay. We got four the and four. Yes. All right. So, uh, in the car, yeah. those investigating the car, you see that right in the driver's side, um, there is. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so the armored car it's been torn to shreds, but the epicenter of the explosion was clearly just under the front of the driver's side tire. So under the tire upon mm-hmm. investigation the force of the explosion it appears that the car was parked over a civilian blasting charge they're typically used for mining um these sort of charges are always set on a timer so the death of shakti was clearly planned out in advance so someone knew she was going to be there at a certain time yeah um got it the northwestern bushes. Uh, what? How many successes did you guys get? Oh, seven. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all? Is that all? <laughs> Sorry. Um. All right. After uh, after digging through the grass for a while, you find the casing for a bullet on the ground. It's been stepped on, but even in its bent form, you can tell that it's a thirty caliber round which is the uh, rounds used in the carbines by the garrison in the southern reaches. While it's not impossible for civilians to purchase a carbine, um, it is a rarity due to it being a worse choice 
for most hunting than a standard bolt action rifle. So this is a very particular kind of weapon that was used. Correct. It's more of a military weapon than it is a um, a civilian or like a hunting weapon. Mm -hmm. What did you find over there? <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll hold up the, the casing and sniff it to, to verify that it's the, the same kind of gunpowder or whatever it is that we mm -hmm. use. Well, I mean, it's it's gunpowder. Mm -hmm. So you do, you you're, but you do uh, share the insights about the uh, type of gun it must have, or could have been fired from. Sure. That it's not common. So that's two of these. Uh, whoops, double double clicked. Uh, that's two of these. Do another one. Well, the next. Wait, one. did we? Was this other question mark by the armor card? Was that the landmine? Or no? Um, yeah, that one. That yeah, yeah. that's where okay. you found. All right, yeah. we've got one more over here. Should we just what go either to that one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we'll together look at this one. Okay. Make my make my way over here. Yeah. Oh man, Katarina, yeah. we're not doing well. Oh, I've been having really problems <laughs> right. with the successes lately. So that is the northwestern. All right. Um, yeah. All right. So uh, you actually, you, so you have a total of three successes over at the bushes. Yes. Uh, you do manage. You scour the bushes for information, but you don't find any signs of anything uh, besides a few pieces of shrapnel that flew away uh, from the exploding car. While the lack of evidence is disappointing, you're confident that you can rule these bushes out for future searches. Cool. Okay. So there's nothing there, but not for lack of trying. All right. Uh, and you four, got four successes the, on the buried, unexploded ordinance. Okay. Oh, so looking at the blood spatter? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. Okay, good. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, it says the dirt is stained with the blood of Shakti. Fortunately, it has not rained in the days since the murder. So the pattern of blood is still easy enough to see. From what you can tell, Based on the splatters, the car exploded. Uh, you also kind of already figured that out from the landmine. Uh, but clearly she limped away from the wreckage and then was shot by a bullet coming from the northwest. Upon further scrutiny, which is near where you the bushes yeah. you found the yeah. cartridge. Um, upon further scrutiny, you also decide that the bullet must have come from very close by. So... Got, we got one more down here, guys. Yep. Should we quickly before it gets dark? All yeah. of us. Dark? All yep. four of us. All four of us. Together. Yep. Sneef. I do a sneef. I hit it twice. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I got zero successes. Oops. All right, so looking around at where she must have been uh, crawling to um, when she was shot, uh, you find uh, sorry, you find a, uh, a lockbox hidden. Now your eyes are left watering, or sorry, no, that was uh, from the, the other investigation. Uh, upon opening the lockbox, you find a mostly charred notebook with the Blue Knight's seal on the front. So I pass out. This. Interesting. Northbound. Is L6GS or 6S? Or 6-3. Oh, a, yes. It's yeah. L6G3. Battleship? <laughs> <laughs> then it has arrived, depart, arrived, depart, arrived, depart. So it's it's looking at, looking at uh, when things came by. Yeah, but this is, I, I, I'm assuming that the first numbers are dates. Which means this is over the course of two days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what's the other number? Well, that's time. 
Yeah. 36, 2, 11, 4. I've never seen a time designation like that. Hmm. And then it says delivery destination on the bottom. Interesting. Cool. Maybe we should oh. show the commander to see if uh, the, the, she ar knows. The arrive numbers are all very similar and the depart numbers are all very similar. So mm -hmm. whatever it is, it, it correlates. Yep. Well, what would be, I don't know, are those minutes or those? Wait. Could be. Delivery destination. Because that, that looks like it could, it could be a, a pounds. Well, uh, maybe we should just start getting back and. Yeah, it's going to get dark soon. Mm -hmm. Yes. We could show the commander. Yeah, I think uh, let's, let's show the commander and maybe take a little break. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So uh, after. Yeah, after visiting that on your way back, you guys are going to head back to the um, you head back to the chapter house. Uh, it's definitely getting late. By the time you guys get back, it is already dark and uh, everyone is pretty much uh, bunking it, bunking down. So uh, I sh oh, I forgot to mention after a combat conflict, everyone will heal up to their uh up to their resolve in health however ravamana you are still at full health you just uh <laughs> have one less heroic action however now that we're resting for the night you will also recover all all of your heroic actions nice so you're gonna go back up to full and yeah let's uh take a little bit of a break here and we'll come back sounds good we'll be right back everyone
Hello, everyone, and welcome back uh, to Freelancer, Skies Over Tolindia. We are playing the demo game, and we have just killed a crab and investigated a murder scene. I love that it's called murder scene. A murder. Murder. <laughs> there were no turtles at the murder scene. Are you sure? <laughs> we don't. We, we don't know who fired that shot. <laughs> We don't have turtle people yet. Yet. <laughs> there's seal. There's a uh, seal. Jesus. There's, there's, there's room. There's people. room. Lots of aquatic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, one of the things that happened off screen is somebody leveled up in a skill area. I, I actually did uh, as well. Yeah, ah, I did too. A couple of people. Oh, wow. So I yeah, we could talk about up. how that worked real quick or. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, who wants? Well, I was gonna say, you know, I I was doing a lot of detection, and so mm -hmm. I was able to get six attempts, and since I only had two in detect, and I had double the amount I needed to go to the next level, I got to go to the next level. So now I have three. All right. Yeah, very very similar firm for me in detect because it was. We did a lot of detecting, and you a, did a, a lot, lot of detecting. Of, yeah, a lot of sneef. <laughs> mm -hmm. all, all right. right um so you guys have headed back to the uh, uh freelancer chapter house and uh before you know heading off to your bunks uh you guys are going to obviously uh hand off your um the evidence you guys have collected so far and meet with commander halima um so yeah, uh, Commander Halima, it, you know, she takes a look at the um, the the journal scrap and kind of frowns. So this is definitely uh, you know northbound, um, looking at the this is the arrival and departure times from. Uh, Oh my gosh, I am sorry. I'm blanking on the name of our 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 fair city. Um, it is my chicken scratch, Teresa Perdue. Yes. Is what I have written, Teresa Perdue. Um, and so yes, uh, so this is the arrival and departure date for the icicle, or uh, not the icicle, but for the commercial. Um, the commercial airships and it's showing that they're on a pretty tight schedule um but i see that it's about two hours off on one day and she's questioning where they're uh delivering to when they arrive 35 hours oh, you know ish hours. So if they're arriving so much later than they're, you know, when they depart, right? The the um, airships that are de leaving here are only taking about eleven hours to get to their destination, but on their way back, they're taking thirty four hours. Hmm. They're taking three times as long. <clears throat> so she's wanting to know uh, where they're stopping what's going on okay there has to be another destination somewhere hmm. interesting well, it's northbound well she says you know what uh it's late well you all need to head back to your bunk you are going to be absolutely useless to me uh in continuing an investigation with no sleep I'm sure you've seen what it does to someone like uh, someone like Cipriano. Um, we'll I'll give it to uh, the investigation of this evidence to one of our other teams, uh, and we will continue your investigation in the morning. I'll also I'll also point out the the munition shell to her the uh, mm. 
the bullet casing that that we found and point out that it is a very unusual um a very unusual ca caliber to be used for anyone that is a civilian and and, 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 it, and it seems very clear to me that uh, that to us that um, what's her name, uh, Shakti survived the explosion, crawled out, and then was shot by this bullet. Hmm. She seems she looks troubled at that information and uh, takes the bullet shell, uh, collecting it in as evidence. Um, says, "Well, good work. That that does." narrow down the suspects um unfortunately that increases my suspicions of cipriano and his incompetence hmm. yeah and then um ravamano relay the information about the explosive and that it must must have been someone who knew that shakti was going to be there at a certain time Mm -hmm. That is troubling. And then uh, just j just to round out what what we know for sure, uh, the the four names that were missing between mm. the, the the two um, passenger logs, and be like, I don't know what it means that these four names are missing from the log that was given to our our dear and darling uh, Garrison, but those names are missing. And Cipriano gave you this false of this. Uh will say changed mistaken document yes mm. and had and had no issue doing so that and the flight logs he was very open with what with what he had at least as far as these documents go i don't I don't, I, I don't suspect corruption and incompetence maybe but not on but not corruption on his part whatever he was doing before uh as he had us wait outside was he said, um, freelancers and take care of it to some unknown associate. Well, I have no doubt in my mind. He was not telling whoever he's talking to is not telling them the freelancers will take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> You've given me a lot to think over. I'll address you guys in the morning and we will, uh, I'll, give you your marching orders. For now, get some rest. You guys have definitely earned it. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Uh, so as I kind of mentioned before we took our break, um, when you guys rest for the night in this capacity, uh, you guys are going to, this is, uh, this is a moment of respite. Um, every character gets the chance to heal up to full health and restore one of your heroic actions, not all the way up to full. Hmm. But uh, fortunately, you guys have only had, had to lose one. Um, you also will get to spend some of your renown, which is our, you know, basically experience. Um, in order for just the demo sake, we actually already kind of uh, automatically calculated what you guys are going to have added. And so uh, Lorenzo, you actually are gaining an ability called breath control. And so I'll let you take down these as notes, uh, or I can either I can send them to you. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to just copy these and paste them into the uh, the roll twenty. Yeah, the roll twenty. Nice, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, Lorenzo. That's breath control. That really helps with my cannon firing, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh no i accidentally closed the document again why did i do that i haven't fired my rifle yet <laughs> well i promise you that will change <laughs> so uh lorenzo gained breath nice. control uh, so let's see. Uh, once per turn, I, I may perform a focus action as a free action. Nice. That's, that's cool. That's really good. Uh, Simeon, you gained the honest face ability. 
So you're going to have advantage to all trick checks outside of combat. <laughs> drop the ball, Simeon. Just, just, just drop the ball. I can't throw it unless you drop the ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ravamana, you're, you actually increased your agility by Ooh, one, yay. which will also increase your defense by one. So your defense will be three in melee. Nice. Awesome. Which is much better than one <laughs> or two. Yes. Right. Well, yeah, and it's only two in melee. Uh, well, so people... my range spear has defensive too. It's true, but uh, defensive just means if you're wielding it in melee. Got it. Those, yeah. Okay. And then Katrina, you gain the fade away ability. As a two action, while you're in cover, you can become undetected if you succeed in a stealth check against the nearest enemy. So that means you can beat, start a combat round undetected, fire your crossbow, and then disappear again. Okay, so I need how many successes in combat? I, I didn't... Um, equal, or sorry, you need to uh, surpass an enemy's detect roll. So it's a contested check. Okay. <clears throat> it's uh, pasted into the chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of actions, though. Yeah, especially considering it's a two action for you to reload your crossbow. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's not going to happen all the time. <laughs> <laughs> But when it does, man, that is that is tasty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Success against the nearest enemies detect. Yes. Cool, cool. All right. And uh, yeah, so you guys are going to, with that, you guys are going to bed down for the night. And uh, you'll end up coming back yeah. to Commander Halima in the Do, morning. Are there other people in the same room as us? Um, to like like bunking? Yeah. Yeah, like, it's going to be pretty shared, okay. uh, like uh, barracks. OK, cool. I'm guessing Ravamon is going to take a lower bunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bunk is just sagging. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, otherwise the bunk would just become a bed. Right. <laughs> Pretty much. Princess nice. Ravamana cannot feel the freelancer under all of her mattresses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> nice. Oh, I love it. Well, nice. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's it's getting towards our bedtime here. Uh, I am yeah. going to run. A different scenario tomorrow at 10.30, or, I'm sorry, 12.30 p.m. Pacific mm -hmm. on twitch.tv slash Slade's Paradise. Um, we will be hosting it here on Quest and Chaos, so you can find it that way. Um, that's for Jasper's Game Day. That is a charity event. Um, you can have a dragon attack if you donate $200. Um, or you can do other things for smaller dollar amounts. And I'll like have to figure out. But, but why would you go smaller than a dragon? <laughs> well, yeah. exactly. I don't think I have to figure out how it works in freelancers. <laughs> so, I'm like, oh yeah, I can make that work. I think you know they're they're assuming everything is five E or right Pathfinder. Like, okay, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> so that is going to be tomorrow, twelve thirty. It's a three hour session. I think we can get through it. Um, it's a it's a it's it's a fun module. I know that because I read it today. <laughs> um, well done. I'll read it again uh, tonight and then yeah. tomorrow morning as well um, to try and remember all of the fancy names that people have. In yeah. This <laughs> you have so. Jake to thank for the names. <laughs> oh, to blame. We will blame Jake. Um, so cool. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up for us. We're going to be back next week to to finish this uh, scenario here on Quest and Chaos. Um, yeah. Uh, be sure to check out the Kickstarter. Um, it is 
uh, in the chat, it's exclamation point freelancer. I'm typing it in right now, so I don't need to tell you. Um, so you go check out the Kickstarter. It is funded. Let's hit let's hit some more stretch goals. Let's let's open some more uh, some more species. Yeah. And Our next stretch goal is gonna have, I believe, it's seven more STL files added to everyone. So yeah, and uh, I'll spoil it here, but um, those are mostly the uh, NPCs for this scenario. So. Don Marco and Ooh. Isabella and Cipriano are all going to be getting miniatures. That uh, cool. Yeah. So there could have been combat in those areas. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> not too late. I mean, there isn't there always potential for combat. True. True. <laughs> we'll see if he like realizes I stole a cup. <laughs> right. <laughs> And that triggers the combat. There we go. <laughs> Thief! <laughs> this isn't Skyrim. There's no blood duels because you killed a chicken um, or stole a wheel of cheese. Wheel right, of exactly. cheese. Exactly. Yeah. Who steals oh. stuff in Skyrim? You go to jail for that. Uh, <laughs> everyone who isn't Thomas, apparently. <laughs> right. Everyone. I, I, I stole once, ended up in jail. I'm like, I'm not doing that again. Reload. <laughs> You only go to jail if they catch you. Well, yeah, and I think, I think and I... are still alive. Yeah. It counts as a successful stealth mission if no one is alive to tell the tale. It just that place is haunted. There was a ghost or something. <laughs> I think I think uh, yeah, I think that I stole it, like right in front of a guard. Like I hit the wrong button, like just trying to quickly mm -hmm. get through like some sort of whatever, and then I'm like, oh, I stole that. And you're like, ah. It's terrible. Really well deserved. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. On that note, uh, we're gonna yeah. go. Good night, everyone. Good we'll night. see you on Saturday. Well, I will see you tomorrow, and then also on Saturday. On yeah. Monday. Not Monday. Not Monday. Anyway, not Monday.